on my desktop, just because it's easy, I'm going to create a folder called Files to Compress. Pick something really obvious. There's no magic to the name. Okay? Inside Files to Compress, it's empty. I'm going to go back over to here and go to the Watch folder, drag it up so you can see, and click this plus button, go to the desktop, and there's Files to Compress, and click Choose. Now, it's automatically going to look in this watch folder, and it's going to compress. See where it says match source, high bit rate? I want to create a YouTube version. So I'm going to grab YouTube, one pass. When I drop a file in this watch folder, it will automatically compress it. I'll show you that more in a second. Now, so far, all it's done is it's created this output folder. Here's where it gets really cool. Because in the watch folder, I want to create two versions. I want to create a version for YouTube, and I want to create a version for my website, hypothetically. You can create four, Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, and your website, or just one, whatever. Go to the Output folder. Create a new folder. We'll call this YouTube. Create a new folder. We'll call this My Website. Create a new folder. We'll call it Facebook. So now I've got inside the Output folder, I've created these three folders. Let's go back to here. Double-click the Output folder. When it creates a YouTube video, I want it to go to the YouTube folder. Then when I create a video for uh, my website, double click it to change the destination, I want it to go to my website. And now if I had a third one, I'm not going to, but it's the same thing. Drag Facebook down, double click it, and point it to Facebook. So now I've got all these settings, so whenever I drop a new file into this folder, it will automatically compress it based on those settings and set it to the appropriate output folder so I know which ones go to YouTube and which ones go to my website. All right, well, that's pretty bold talk. Let's see what happens. Let's take our dance video. We'll take a different one, drop it into files to compress. Now, in order for a watch folder to work, Adobe Media Encoder needs to be running. Okay, just copied the file to files to compress. I just sit here and wait. Because what will happen is Media Encoder says, oh, there's a file there, and look what's happened. Because I've got parallel encoding turned on, it's encoding both those files at the same time because I've got two different settings going on. And although the settings are different, it's smart enough to know that one of these goes to the YouTube folder. Ta-da! YouTube folder, it's still compressing, it'll be done in a second, and it'll wrap it all up. And the other one goes to my website, right there. So let's say I drop 15 files into this Files to Compress folder. All 15 will get compressed for YouTube, and they get compressed for my website, and Facebook, and Vimeo, and whatever else I need, automatically sorted to the right folder. I then tell my YouTube uh, manager to go into the YouTube folder, grab what he or she needs, and drag it up to the web. Very cool stuff. The only limitation with watch folders, and you'll see this in Compressor, the only limitation with watch folders is that Adobe Media Encoder needs to be running. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the basics of video compression. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 191. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.